Hi, my name is Logan Martin. And before I get into my topic today, I'd like to ask you all a question. Show of hands, how many of us in here have ever had a goal? And I don't mean like a quiz to do well on it, but I mean like a serious goal we want to work towards. Anybody? All right, probably everybody in this room or you wouldn't be at trying, right? Now I want you to imagine a scenario. You achieve your goal, you get your degree, and you become the very best in what you do. I mean number one in the nation. You've worked hard, you've put blood, sweat, and tears into this, and then one day, it's stolen from you. Somebody took your greatest role when they did not deserve it. The reason I say this to you is because this has been happening to female athletes, and that leads me into my topic. The unfair advantage. Transgender women do not belong in cisgender women's sports. Now, for my points today, I would like to talk about the physiology differences between men and women, specifically with lean body mass. I would like to talk about um, the process and how long it takes for a transgender woman to actually participate in cisgender women's sports. And then I'm gonna use a couple of examples of this injustice. So, with that being said, I want to start with my first point. Now, in the Journal of um, Weightlifting by uh, Johnson Dean and a few his other associates, back in 2009, they did an experiment. They wanted to see, uh, they wanted to take a poll of college students who had at least two years experience of weightlifting to see who men or women could do more repetitions of two different workouts. The lat pull down, which is where you pull a bar behind your head and it lifts weight, and a weighted pull up, where you have some type of weight on you and you do a pull up. Now, in their findings, they found that taking lean body mass out of the equation <clears throat> and strength out of the equation, men and women were pretty comparable. I mean, they, they were both very similar in their results. They both were able to do more lat pull downs than they were pull ups. However, they made sure to make a point in their article. They stated that when lean body mass is taken into consideration and the weight difference to give them even numbers, men had 34% more weight during these workouts than women. 34% more, guys. Now, we all know men are stronger than women, naturally, and that's because we have a hormone named testosterone. Now, testosterone doesn't necessarily mean that a woman can't be stronger than a man. However, it just helps us build muscle and lean body mass a lot faster, which leads me to my next point. Um, the NCAA and the International Olympic Committee have both set rules for transgender women competing in cisgender women's sports. Those rules being that a transgender woman, after 12 months of um, hormone therapy, an observation has to have a testosterone count of 10 nanomoles. Now that, that's just ridiculously small. It's insane. How? And it's less than a natural woman, a cisgender woman. She has more than 10 nanomoles. However, there's a study by a man named Harper and his associates who focused on hormone therapy on transgender women. And in their findings, they found that yes, testosterone levels are lower than a natural, naturally born woman or a cisgender woman. However, transgender women tend to keep the lean body mass they had as a man up to 36 months after treatment. Three years. And the NCAA and the IOC only require one year of testosterone lower levels before women can, these transgender women can compete in cisgender sports. This means these transgender women are coming in with the lean body mass of a man and competing against women. Now, how is that fair? It's not, plain and simple. And I'm gonna give you two examples of where champions were taken, had titles taken from them because of this. First, I'd like to talk about a UFC fighter named Fallon Fox. Fallon Fox uh, became the champ champion in her weight class on her final match she ever had back in 2018. She faced a woman named Tamika, Tamika Brent, who was the previous champion in this weight class. T 
Tamika Brent was known for her ground game, wrestling, submissions, stuff like that. And she was pretty much the best in the women's in that women's weight class for it. Tamika or uh, Fallon Fox destroyed her. I mean, she she beat her to the point where she broke Tamika Brent's skull. And in an interview, Tamika Brent told the interviewer that in her life, she has never faced somebody so strong and so demanding as Fallon Fox. And when I say that, I don't mean she hasn't faced fighters who've beaten her in ground game or submissions. Of course she has. She said it herself. However, she still felt like she had somewhat control over her body. When Fallon put her into a submission or a clinch, she felt like she couldn't move. She felt, and I quote, helpless. I don't think any champion should ever feel helpless, or anyone for that matter. Next, I'd like to talk about um, a Penn State swimmer named Leah Thomas. She's been blowing up in the news lately, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of her. I actually have a picture of her here. That's her, all the way on the right here. She competed in the 500 freestyle in the NCAA um, national title and got first place. She, she is now ranked the number one 500 freestyle swimmer in the country. Her opponent um, actually tied with her for first, but the problem is her opponent t told reporters that she felt her victory was stolen from her. Now I did some research. I looked into the NCAA rankings um, of 2019, which is the last time that Leah Thomas, formerly known as Will Thomas, swam in the men's division. Leah Thomas, Will Thomas, didn't even make the top 16 in the 500 freestyle. Upon further research, I found that Will Thomas, Leah Thomas, was ranked 65th in the nation in the men's 500 freestyle. Now you tell me how somebody who is ranked 65th can shoot up to first within one year of competition, and we can still call that fair. In conclusion, from seeing the, mat, the huge difference in strength between men and women, the laughable conditions they have for a transgender woman to compete in cisgender women's sports, and the examples we've seen of these transgender women destroying their competition, who've worked their entire lives and fought for what they wanted, I mean, this is rigged. This is unfair. I don't want my dreams stolen from me. You guys don't want your dreams stolen from you. So why do these cisgender women who have worked their whole lives uh, have to have theirs taken from them? My call to action to you guys is to please help me start a petition. Let's get as many signatures as we can and send it off to the IOC and the NCAA. Let's make a petition to stop this injustice of allowing transgender women to compete in cisgender women's sports and let's make sports fair again. My name is Logan Martin. Thank you.